Michelle Violet here, second generation homeschooling mom of three. I have an eight year old, a five year old, and an infant. Today I wanted to share with you a comparison and flip through of a bunch of different ocean reference books. A lot of them are DK books. So let's get into it. So in my last video, I showed you the little shark unit that I put together for my son. So most of these books are books that I checked out to look at and kind of supplement that unit. So yeah, let's get into comparing them. These first two are the DK Find Out and DK Eyewitness Ocean, Ocean's Ocean book. This, the only real difference between them is that this one's aimed at a slightly younger audience than this one. So it has a little bit less information and the layout is a lot more user-friendly in my opinion. Both of my kids, even though my daughter is probably more ready for material at this level. Both of my kids vastly prefer the layout of this book and they will they will gravitate more towards these. Um, so I'll just show you, they're about the same length, but I'll just kind of show you, maybe I'll show you this one first. So this one's about 64 pages and the pages are set up to have a lot of pictures and some text, but in a less overwhelming fashion, in my opinion, than the eyewitness books, which I'll show you in just a minute. Topics are slightly different, but a lot of the pictures and a lot of the information is pretty similar between the two. So here's the eyewitness book. And this is, this is the eyewitness books, the newer ones are a lot better than they were when I was a kid. Like they were very visually overwhelming when I was a kid with a lot of little inset boxes and information all over the place. But they're still, they still kind of tend in that direction and that's just less user friendly for my kids and I. Um, but the pictures are just so good <laughs> that we still check them out a lot. This one also covers a lot um, more topics and kind of a broader overview of oceans than the DK find out one. All right. The next two DK books we're going to compare are ocean exclamation point and ocean, the definitive visual guide. So these are both ocean encyclopedias. And again, the main difference is that this one is aimed at a younger audience than this one. So I'll show you inside this one first. This one too uses a lot of computer generated images, which we're not fans of. It also has a lot of real pictures too, but sometimes they're, I don't know, some of the pictures were kind of like, it was hard to tell if it was a real picture and it had just been digitally touched up or if it was a computer generated picture. There's something about these pictures were just kind of hitting the uncanny valley vibe for me, even though I think a lot of them really are real pictures. I don't know. And then the layout of this is, it has, it intersperses other topics about oceans too. But when it's talking about like the animals, it's fairly encyclopedic in terms of giving you kind of standardized information for each entry. So, oh, my son didn't like this one that much. Um, he just didn't really pull it out. He liked the DK find out. And then he liked one of the other encyclopedias that I'll show you at the end. Then this is the Ocean, the Definitive Visual Guide. So this one has really incredible pictures. This is the one that I would get if I were going to get a like picture heavy um, kind of visual encyclopedia over the other one. I just like the way this one is set up better. And I like the pictures better. And this one's a bit thicker, so it includes more information. But this isn't something that I would expect my kids to read to themselves. And you can see that now with the entries for things, it also includes a map, which is helpful. I'm in general, a big fan of DK books. I think they're well put together. The last DK book I want to show you is Oceanology. And I was wondering how that one was different from this one, because they kind of looked pretty similar to me. But this one is very um, scientific and very much an ocean encyclopedia. This one's kind of more like an ocean, almost like an ocean coffee table book, but it explores the connection between science and art a lot. So a lot of the sections have a famous piece of art that kind of introduces a section. Let me see if I can find one of them, which I thought was a really neat connection. Yeah, so here's a famous map. I guess it's not introducing the section, but where, where it makes sense, they introduce 
famous artwork and it's a much simpler and kind of cleaner, more modern layout than the Ocean Encyclopedia. This is very much focused on art, real pictures, here's some information. So this is kind of what I would think of as coffee table book, but if you have somebody who's really interested in nature art, this would be a really good book for them to look at too. The last encyclopedia that I have to show you is the World Encyclopedia of Fish, Shellfish, and Other Aquatic Creatures, and this was everybody's favorite. My son had us read pages and pages and pages of this to him. He just really, really liked it. And the World Encyclopedia also makes my favorite animal encyclopedia. I think it's just called the World Encyclopedia of Animals. But I really like the way their encyclopedias are laid out. It's very standardized and it has ton they have a bunch of introductory information at the beginning. But it has tons of animals and the entries are very standardized with information about the animal, map, distribution habitat, food, size, breeding, status, all of that stuff, and then illustrations that are very lifelike. So this just has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish and ocean animals and pretty much anything that my son was curious about that he had seen in Aquanauts that he wanted to look up, it was in here. So that was really exciting for him. And then lots of stuff, of course, that he hadn't heard of before. So we spent a lot of time looking at this and I really, really like this book. I don't know yet if we're going to buy it. I'm going to return it to the library and see how often my son asks for it. That's kind of usually how I decide whether something is worth adding to our library, especially when it's a little bit bigger and a little bit more expensive like this, is how often are we checking it out from the library? Because if it starts to be all the time, then then we'll, we'll buy it. <laughs> so I hope you found this helpful. I had fun looking at all of these different ocean reference books. I will link everything in the description box below. I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you click on an Amazon link and make a purchase, I do receive a small commission. Thank you for watching.